Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michael Hayes. In this series, we're helping out future educators in Texas as they prepare to take their EC6 exam in all subject areas. We are focusing on science right now, and we're going to be looking at significant figures and the scientific method coming up next. Okay, so if you're just tuning in, we started this episode or this series uh, just last week. We have a few episodes before this one. You can check them out right here on this uh, card. It will take you to my playlist, which will show all past episodes, as well as any future episodes that we record after this. If you couldn't see the card up in this area when I pointed to it, you can check in the link below. I will have that card or that link as well. And I'll also reference materials and other things that will be very beneficial for you to check out. So I would encourage you to see the last episode that we watched before watching this one. It was measurement part two because we couldn't talk about significant figures. So it might be worth your while to check that out first. Now all of my lessons, I'm trying to keep them at five minutes. So once we start the clock, you'll see it in the corner. And uh, once we wrap up, we'll be ready to show you the next episode. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get our clock started. And coming up right now, five minutes on the clock. Okay, talking about significant figures. Significant figures are telling your audience or whoever you're relaying your information to how precise your measurement is. So for example, if we are reading a, 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 a graduated cylinder, and let's say that it is accurate to the ones place. So we can accurately read to 20, let's say 20 milliliters, okay? So when we write that out, we say our measurement for this liquid is 20 milliliters. Okay, we didn't say 20.0 because that would be a more precise piece of equipment. But let's say, for example, that our graduated cylinder did read as accurate to the tenths place. So we could say that we had 20.0 milliliters of water. So that's telling our audience that the 0.0 in the tenths place is a true measurement of, of a zero quantity. So if you said you had 20.3 milliliters of water, you truly have 20.3 milliliters of water. Your instrument that you're using is that precise. We could even say that we have 20.125 milliliters of water. That means our accuracy or our precision is all the way to the uh, thousandths place, okay? So whatever uh, decimal point we go to is how precise our measurement is. The more decimals we have where there's true figures showing up, even zeros as placeholders, so let's say we say 20.002, that's telling our audience that that 0 .00 are just placeholders to get to the thousandths place. They're all significant. Now, uh, let's say that we have 14.0, that is three significant figures. That 0, .0 meant something. Now, when we're adding figures or, or when we're adding uh, quantities together or we're subtracting or whatever, we're only as accurate as our least precise measurement. So let's say that we have 20 milliliters of water and we want to add that to 20.40 milliliters of water. Well, our answer in calculation can only be 40 milliliters because the first quantity I gave you was 20. It wasn't 20.0, it was 20. So we can only be as accurate as our least accurate amount, okay? And that comes into play in science, okay? Okay, let's talk about the scientific method. There are seven steps in the scientific method. We first have to state our problem, then we have to research our problem, we have to come up with a hypothesis based on our problem and our research, then we're gonna come up with an experiment that's gonna test our hypothesis, then we're gonna observe it, we're gonna have a conclusion, and then we're gonna communicate our conclusions with others, okay? So there's seven steps. So here's a way to remember them. People really hate eating on crowded commutes. People really hate eating on crowded commutes. So P-R-H-E-O-C-C, -C, okay? So let's go through it real quick. We gotta state our problem. So what do we wanna investigate? What do we wanna check out? So let's say, for example, we have a plant, and we think this plant will grow better with fertilizer than without it. And so we are going to research uh, fertilizers and plants and see if it has an effect. So we do all this research and we want to test it. So first of all, after we do our research and we investigate it, we can come up with a thought process, whether we do or do not think that the fertilizer will help the growth and health of the plant. Well, in my research, it claims it's going to. And I'm going to say, well, I, I think it's going to, based on the research I've seen, but I haven't investigated it yet. And the research I've seen hasn't been uh, verified so I want to verify it based on my own experimental design. So my hypothesis is, yes, I think this plant will grow better with fertilizer. So then I come up with an experiment. So I want to make sure I have at least two plants, identical in their, in their age, identical in their species, identical in everything about them, their health, their soil, their water intake, their amount of light they receive, 
Everything has got to be the same. They have to have the same variables. The only difference is one plant's going to receive some fertilizer where the other one will not. And I'm going to give the fertilizer according to the instructions so I don't overdo it or underdo it. And then I'm going to record my data. Every day I do it, I'm going to say how much water and fertilizer I gave this plant, how much water, water without fertilizer I gave this plant. The water amount has to be the same. And I do everything identical every day. Temperature, everything is the same. And then I record that data from my observations. I record any quantities that I measured, any observations, the health of the plant, the color. And then I come up with a conclusion at the end. And I look at it and say, did this plant grow better with fertilizer versus the one that did not? If it did, then I can say with certainty that my hypothesis was correct based on my experiment, based on the data that I re uh, received, and I want to communicate that with others. I want to tell others, hey, I verified that this fertilizer has an effect of health and growth on this one plant, and here are my results. I want to share those with the scientific community, with others I know, and I want to say, hey, here's how I did it. You're welcome to verify my results by doing your own experiment, okay? All right, let's see what our time's looking like. We got three seconds. We wrapped it up pretty good. So in our next video, I plan on looking on how we record that data and how we represent it in maybe some different charts and graphs. So that'll be coming up next in my, next, in my future video after this one. So make sure to catch that video and any other videos that I produce. Make sure that you subscribe. Don't forget to click the little reminder bell for notifications. That lets you uh, be alerted to the fact when I post a new video, you will be alerted to that. Also, please like and subscribe and share these videos with your friends. Also, you can comment below. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. And also, you can suggest ways I can improve these videos. I would love to hear those comments as well. So we will see you next time on Mr. Hayes' YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.